Hello friends, this video on crop production and management part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the last step of the entire crop production process and that is storage. Now that we have harvested, so we got the grains. Now our challenge is to store the grains because it is not necessary that the quintals and quintals of grains which are being produced from one huge field, they will all get utilized the same day. So now they will be transported to some other location, maybe to some cities. Like as I said, we all do not grow our own crops, right? It comes from, again, from some field where some farmers are taking taking care of the cultivation. So it, it, it has to be transported to other parts and then there also it will get stored in the shops and then people will come and buy it and then again they will store it in their home. So storage is an important aspect. So what we do we need to uh, ensure while we think of storage. Now have you ever wondered that when you have, let us suppose you have a box and you have a lot of eatables inside that box. So what will you prefer? Will you prefer to keep that box open or will you prefer to close that box? Like let us suppose inside you have some fruits, vegetables or some other eatables and so what will you what will you like to do when you are storing these food materials you would keep it open or you would keep it closed you would keep it closed why right? so that uh, it do not do not get infected with some insects or it shouldn't happen that some other animals came and they ate it up or it, some microorganisms spoiled the food so we do not want anything like that to happen and that is why we tend to store it properly and what do we mean by properly we close it so that other insects or insects or organisms or germs cannot enter inside the box and that means our food items are all safe. In fact, this for this basic reason itself, we tend to keep all sort of eatables, whether it is cooked food, raw food, spices or anything. We keep everything covered to protect against insects or microbes or infection or contamination. So if you want, you can just go to your kitchen and have a look at the way things are kept in your kitchen. You will see that all the things in your kitchen, whether it is sugar or salt or spices or pulses or cereals, so everything is kept in jars. In fact, when your mom cooks something, the cooked food is also always covered with a lid. So everything is covered and everything is well stored in containers. That's because whatever is there in your kitchen, not everything is going to get consumed the same day. You are going to store it for a while and then maybe you will consume it over a period of a couple of weeks or a period of couple of months. And that's how like, most of us will bring grocery somewhat like this. Maybe today we purchase, purchase a grocery which is good enough to go for one month because we do not want to come to the shop every day to buy stuff. I mean, if you start buying things like this, that okay, today I buy rice, pulses, spices, salt, sugar, everything only for that day. So will you buy that small amount? No. So you buy buy it in a considerably good amount and then that lasts for you for maybe a month or a couple of weeks. So that means you will have to store those materials properly so that it lasts for a couple of weeks or for a couple of months. And that is why storage plays a very important role. So we need to keep in mind that we have stored everything properly so that it it is well protected against any sort of contamination. Now the question is why is proper storage important? That's because we need protection against moisture because if there is moisture, what is moisture? Moisture is nothing but presence of water. So when there is presence of water, it favors the growth of bacteria which can spoil food. So if there is a lot of water in any food item, it doesn't last long. And that is why you, you would have seen that uh, when your uh, mothers prepare pickle. So in pickle, they tend to put a lot of lemon so that it has that sour thing because lemon helps to preserve it for a longer time. At the same time, they do not put water because when you put water, water allows the growth of bacteria which can spoil the food so it will not be preserved for a very long period so there should be no moisture at all because these kind of spoilage bacteria all they need is water and nutrients to multiply so if there is no water it is a little difficult for them to grow and spoil the food so the first thing is moisture 
So the next reason is protection against microorganisms. A lot of bacteria and fungi, they might attack the food items or not only food items, the grain seeds or any other thing which we want to preserve. So from attack of microorganisms because they can very easily spoil the food. Protection against insects because they can contaminate the food. A lot of insects act as carrier of diseases. So they just transmit the infection from one organism to another. So that means these are the three major reasons against which the food item needs to be well protected and that is why proper storage is very important. So how do we ensure storage of food grains? So food grains should be well dried before storage. Now why this is important? As I told you that moisture is something that can give rise to spoilage bacteria and we do not want that. So before we store it, we have to dry it properly because normally what happens is the fresh food grains, they contain a lot of water. So if we store it just like that, so water is already present there. So due to the presence of that water, microorganisms can grow. So bacteria can spoil the food. So before storing, it needs to be dried properly so that there is no trace of moisture and then we can store it either in metallic containers which is co properly covered so that it is not attacked by insects or uh, any other microbes. We can also store them in jute bags and then cover them well. So these are some of the ways by which they are stored. Now storage of food grains is very very important because if it is not stored properly, firstly it might get attacked by insects or microbes. Now as a result of that it might lose its germination capacity. Now if it loses its germination capacity that means those seeds will not be able to give rise to a new plant. So if that becomes the case then there is no point of having those seeds. And you already saw that how much of effort and time was required to produce these seeds. So this is the last step of the agricultural practice, so the entire process which was there. So that resulted, so the, this, these seeds are the result of this entire cultivation process. So if these seeds lose their germination capacity just because of bad storage, so that is really bad because we, we, we are going to lose or we are going to lose the entire effort and time just because of bad storage. So we need to ensure that it is stored properly so that it can be utilized for later use. Sometimes at home neem leaves are also used to uh, store things so that things do not get spoiled. That's because the neem leaves you would have if you have ever tasted the neem leaves you will see that it has a bitter taste. That is because of the presence of some alkaloids which help to repel insects and pathogens. So those alkaloids, they do not attract insects and pathogens. They in fact repel them. So insects and pathogens do not attack the food item which contains neem leaves. So overall in this lesson, we spoke about the entire process of crop production and management and it all started with preparation of soil where we prepared the soil for growing crops by plowing it, by leveling it and then we sow the seeds, that is we scattered the seeds on the prepared soil, then we added manures and fertilizers to provide enough nutrients for better growth of the plant, then we irrigated the field, that is we provided enough water to so that plants get sufficient water for for their growth and then we applied weedicides to protect the crops from the effects of the weeds and finally came the harvesting where when once the crops become mature they are cut and followed by threshing where the grains get separated from chaff and finally a proper storage of the food grains so that they do not get attacked by insects or microbes. So this is all that we have studied in this entire lesson and I hope that my little friend is convinced enough with, under, with the understanding of crop production and management and now he would be able to understand that whatever he saw in the village is extremely beneficial for all of us. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.